all over social media, people always talk about ways to be a millionaire, talking about streams of income. They're talking about fast ways to get rich. Today, we're just going to talk about five income streams that will make you a millionaire. If you follow this blueprint, I suggest you grab a pen and paper, uh, save this video, or you know, subscribe to the channel so you can always come back to the video. That's always the easiest way for me. And follow this blueprint of what we're doing to, you know, achieve millionaire status, multi-millionaire status, and things of that nature. But these five income streams are the key to getting the ball rolling. Of course, like everybody knows the adage, uh, millionaires have seven streams of income. We're going to give you five that anybody can do any day, every day. Of course, it's a process, but we're there to strive to get you to financial freedom and financial success so with that said alex let's start it off what you got yeah so we we got five different steps guys or five different incomes so the first one is having a w-2 job and i like that you had put this on the list Kirby, because a lot of people think that what well, i seem to think or believe in my opinion from seeing people they seem to have the idea that to become a millionaire it's a chance of luck and unless you're lucky you're never going to be a millionaire a w-2 job is first up on the list having your job is obviously your base of income and you need that to form your portfolio you need an income stream to start buying assets and if that comes from a w-2 job then so be it and that's where we go into in other videos living below your means, budgeting, you know, managing your own money so that you can have extra cash used to dedicate towards investing. So I like that this one is first up on the list because this can apply to every single person that's uh, in the working class in America. So what's second yeah, up on the people... list? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going a, I'm to a double back down on you on that one. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, people get this idea. Oh, to be a millionaire, you don't need a job. Oh, you can't have a job. I'm going to be a millionaire. Millionaires don't have a job. That's a crock of crap. Let's just be honest. It's it's BS. All right. The first wealth building tool is your income. First thing you need to do is settle the foundation. The foundation is your four walls. You need to have shelter. I don't care. I mean, I prefer you have a roommate to keep your expenses as low as possible. You know, have a couple roommates, house hack, whatever. But you need to take care of your four walls. You need shelter. You need uh, somewhere to eat. You need food. You need utilities. Besides that, cars, all that other stuff, I don't really care about. But you need to take care of your four walls. How are you going to take care of your four walls at the most efficient way is, of course, get roommates. You know, you want to make it the lowest price, the lowest cost for you, but you need an income to take care of that. Now that the foundation is set, and then maybe you have some roommates. Maybe you can cut your costs instead of living by yourself. Then you take all the extra income to start investing in other avenues. But the W-2 income is where you start. You know, maybe you want to get a W-2 income. Maybe get two jobs. Maybe get a main income job and then get a side hustle. But that work, exchanging your time for money, is the first element of income that you need to get it going. Like in the video we just did with Jeff Bezos, He's worth $10 billion, but he's still working for the company. W2 job was his first baseline for everything. The second one is dividend income. So this one is interesting. I remember when I first started getting dividends, it showed me that income could be made from other ways. I already knew the arbitrage thing. So seeing income come in from dividends kind of gives you that perspective as like a novice investor that okay let me do some quick math if i had x amount of shares i would have this much coming in and so it kind of gets your brain running you start to see you know at this amount of shares these dividends will cover my phone bill at this amount of shares it'll cover my light bill and so it kind of gives you that idea of that passive income as to how much you're going to need to basically live off of and obviously yes to live off of dividend income it's a lot of shares that you're going to have to own and a lot of capital invested but it's a good tool i believe to get you that 
step ahead into thinking differently about investing. Yeah, Alex, you made a good point. You made a great point of getting you to think. And that's the key element of dividend investing. So we talked about the W-2 income and the rest of these numbers is not an order, but the W-2 income is the number one. And then so now that you you have your baseline foundation and you're living as cheaply as possible, now you have income to invest in other things. So that dividend income yeah, you're going to invest and then you're going to see little trickles, little drips coming in, little drips. It's not going to be life changing money, but it's going to do exactly, Alex, what you said is going to make you start thinking, oh, I can put money to work, send money out there to the ether, and then it will bring me back more money. How else can I bring back more money from using the money that I have for my W2 job to bring make more money, make more money? And dividends, I think, is the first a place for that but if you're not you know savvy investor and all that dividends is where the baseline to go you put your money in there you will get you know appreciation of the stock you know three to eight percent a year and then you will get the dividend depending on what you uh invest in you know maybe two to four percent on the dividend side but that's extra income that you're not physically working for that's coming into your account that is a very key element to understanding how money works and then once you get uh, understanding the baseline of how money works, then there's other avenues to go to. Now, Alex is going to send you with the next uh, way to bring in income from after you start your W-2 job. Yeah, so the next one we have is buying businesses. Now, I wish I could speak more on this one, but I can't. I have never bought a business. So, Kirby, I do want to hand this back off to you. Maybe you could speak more from experience as to is the income from this different than owning shares? Is it different from owning real estate and kind of how it operates? Yeah, and I'm glad you passed it. And so the thing is this, it's everybody has this ideal and concept of, hey, I want to own my own business. But when they think of this ideal and concept of owning my own business, they think that, oh, I have to start off at ground zero and then I have to build it step by step by step by step. You, you know, they want to be the Elon Musk. But people don't realize Elon Musk bought a business before he created his home business from scratch. Uh, even Mark Cuban bought a business before, you know, all, all these people bought businesses before they started their own business from scratch. The best way to start a business, it's easier to buy revenue than to create revenue. I'll keep it simple as far as like a, a beauty salon or something like that. It is easier to buy an already existing operational business. You buy that business and then with the revenue that business is already generating, then you put your thumbprint on there. You do the remodels, you uh, push uh, ads, different avenues, you acquire customers different from what's already started. It's already functional. But when you, most people want to start, you know, they want to go to a strip mall, get a blank slate. So they want to put hundreds of thousands of dollars into build out and rent and everything else, but they don't even have the first single customer to build revenue off of. That's uh, backwards way of thinking buy a business that's already generate revenue it's probably not operating optimally that is your job as an entrepreneur as a business owner to make optimization of the business you buy the business then you start to build upon what they have trust me it will cost you less money to buy a business than start from scratch it, let me say it again it will cost you less money to buy a business in your niche than to start from scratch and then you can mold that business to where it's at. And then when I say operational business, I'm not saying operational business, let's stick with the salon. Let's say if you're a barber, I'm not saying it's a business if you have to work there to make ends meet. That's not a business. What I mean is you buying a business that's fully operational and the cash flow from that business, your owner distribution without you working on a nine to five basis, you know, maybe you got meetings and stuff like that. You talking to management and stuff like that. Then 
Okay, but if you have to work there, you're not buying a business, you're buying a job. So buy a business that that's already operational without your physical input there on a day-to-day -day basis and you run it from a higher element than actually working on a scene. And that's another way to bring income into the household. And that's what I did. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And so to the fourth one is selling options on the stock market. So if you are doing this in the aspect that you have done your homework, you have researched companies, you have found a solid company, built a thesis, you believe in that company, and you've taken the route to sell options on your position. I think this is like a cheat code to making money. I mean, it's it is absolutely mind blowing still to this day to me as to how easy it is to make money from this. And almost like I've thought to myself, like, thank God this is an option in America. But it's unfortunate that like many people do not know of this. But the key is take the emotion out of it and do the homework and find a company that you believe in. Don't try to do this with, you know, meme stocks. You're going to blow up your account. So you want to make sure you are in a good stock, but selling options where basically you've built your position and then you are making that weekly or monthly income. It's an amazing way. And we can go in depth on a different video. I don't want to confuse the audience as to how to sell options but selling options rather than buying options to sell just selling them based off your position is like it's it's like having another paycheck coming in so kirby right. go ahead and Alice, i think i think you said it right with this is the cheat code it's a cheat code to the dividend income i mean as people see that they're going to invest in dividend income producing stocks they know the money is not going to be as much but now if you buying a dividend king or a dividend aristocrat and then you're compounding on top of that selling weekly quarterly monthly options on top of that the dividend income exasperates from what it is so you know maybe you know using just i'm just gonna use a four percent dividend stock and then like forward and then you sell the options on a weekly basis so you're getting a four percent on the dividend and then you're getting another 20, 25% a year on the option selling. Uh, that's like 30% a year return. You know, the stock market itself on, re you know, returns 10, 11%. So cheat code is the key there. I mean, yeah, we could, we got videos already out there in the uh, playlist, but I advise everybody to look up selling options, not buying options. 99% of the videos you see on YouTube and social media will be about buying options. That quick flip. This is not a channel talking about getting rich quick. It's about getting rich for sure. But if you can compound, you know, 25, 30% year on year returns on top of what the stock market doing, on top of what the dividends are already paying out, you're on a fast track to making millions with just that alone. But then when you add all the other elements we talked about, buying businesses, dividend income, W2 job, you're cooking and you're cooking with fish grease. For y'all that don't know, fish grease is hotter than all the other stuff to make it happen. But you're cooking real hard. Val, let's, let's, let's wrap a bow on this and let's give them the last one. Yeah, so last one, guys, is buying rental properties. And I think this is probably the biggest one to becoming that millionaire net worth or status. When I started buying real estate, I think I quickly saw my net worth increase. And that's because when you are investing in rental properties, not flipping, but you're actually buying and holding, renting, you are pretty much, for the most part, I would say, in control of how that value is going to go up or down. And what I mean by this is the after repair value you put in, if it's a single family, or even in a multifamily sense, if you put the correct labor into it and remodeling into it, and you have the ability now to raise those rents to at a premium above market rate, that income you're going to be making dramatically increases the value of the property from where it was before. 
So you are really kind of directly in control of as to how much equity you can kind of pull out of this. And the benefit of it too, I mean, is really just getting that monthly income. I mean, I remember the first rental check I collected, I texted you, Kirby, or I think I called you and I said, hey, so I just collected a check. Like, is this, is that it? <laughs> you were like, yeah, welcome. <laughs> like, welcome to the club. And I was like, okay, so... You know, and then once you start to get that second, third, fourth unit and and so on, like it start you start to see like, oh shoot, like this is adding up, you know. And so the cash flow just adds up and then you start to kind of see the light as to okay, now I need X amount of properties to basically max go above as to what I'm making at my job. Alex, you made a you made a perfect point. Uh I think you described it perfectly. Uh, I'm going to put this in the same avenue of buying a business. I mean, if you're going to have rental properties, don't believe in this myth that you need to go build a single family house, duplex, threeplex, fourplex from the ground up. It's easier to buy revenue than create revenue. The amount of money that you're going to spend on building a house from ground up to rent it out is more expensive than buying a property that's already rented out with tenants inside. And then, like Alex said, you can do the value adds to it. You can update the units. You can raise rents to increase the value. And those things right there, you are in control of your own destiny. You know, as long as you're in a good neighborhood, you know, good school district, it has amenities uh, locally, you know, within a you know five to 10 mile radius, you'll be fine. And then you just, you know, Add the value, you know, increasing rents. Right now, I'm dealing with the property right now. Tenant been in there for like 16 years. Rents hasn't been increased, but I see the value in it. I see the area. I see the locale. And I'm going to acquire the property. And then, of course, do upgrades to a pre-existing property. And then rents will be raised over time to increase the value of the property. And then, therefore, the neighborhood. And life goes on. But those right there are ways to bring in income. Now, notice we ain't say, oh, quit your job, go live it up and go buy a private jet. We want to get rich for sure, not get rich quick. We're not trying to live the social media life. We want to live a life where if anything happened in life, because the only thing guaranteed in life, something bad will happen. That we're prepared, not surprised for it. But these streams of income will get you to the millionaire status. These streams of income will get you to where you want to be, where you're comfortable and you're happy to say you contributed to society and you did something. And it's something that your family can be proud of you about. There's no secret sauce. There's no magic formula. It's just doing the work and getting it done. So Alex, I'm going to let you wrap it up because I know I done ran over <laughs> And with all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, leave us a comment, and we will see you guys in the next one.